So just how important is the mental game of golf? What if I told you it was everything in golf? Everybody is trying to get in this zone. <sighs> what is the zone? The mental zone. It's a real thing. Look at Tiger Woods. He was always in a mental zone. So how do you get in this zone more? And why is golf 90% mental, 10% work? And today we're going to list those things off. Toast for the boys. Here we go. Number one, confidence. If you are not confident in your game, your game will show it. Every PGA professional you see is so confident in their game when they're at their highest levels. They do not care who you are. All they care about is winning. Week to week, that's what they have to do. They think they're the best. That is one of the biggest things and you literally have to believe it yourself because if you do not believe it yourself, who else is gonna believe it? So mental game coaches actually are very expensive. Money, dinero. So I'm giving you guys this information for free and I am not a mental game coach. These are the things that I have learned over my 10 years of golf and competitive golf, college golf. Very valuable information if you want it. You don't have to take it, but it's free. I have actually looked into a mental game coach and you know how much they charge? $500 for nine holes. So if you wanna pay that, do it. If you don't believe you can shoot under par and you're always saying, man, I can't shoot under par, you're probably not gonna do it. Number two, you keep the same routine. How do I get in that zone to where I'm making birdie, 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 like going on birdie streaks? Routine. When I can tell I'm not playing as good is because I'm not going this through the same routine that has brought me success in the past. If I wanna go back into that, I trigger that in my mind, which it all starts in your mind. I've put in more time, but seen less results, but then mentally I have a lesser amount of time on my work but I was mentally stronger, which made me play better, which is crazy, but routine. So if you have a solid routine and do the same thing over and over again, that's the only thing that you control in your whole golf game. Even though you could hit a perfect shot down the middle of the fairway and you can still find a divot, but the only thing you can control is that routine. Now, once it leaves the club face, it's all for grabs. It's crazy. Golf is the only game you really cannot control because there's so many conditions that the ball has to go through and you can hit a bad bump, this, that, this, that. To be in the zone more, you have to have a solid routine, guys. So what kind of routine is there? You know what, I'll just give you guys a routine. Everybody's different, but I'm just gonna give you a, a basic one so you guys can actually practice a routine. And there's actually a book I read, it's, God, I forgot the name of it. The Winning Way to Golf in Life. Highly recommend that book. Number one, refocus. So what does this mean? You're coming up to your ball, whether you're riding in a car, you're walking, you come up to your ball. This is the time you start to think about the golf shot. You don't think about it when you're riding because that is a bad mistake. So you refocus during this time. Next, you go through your routine. I swing twice. I talk to myself what shot I'm gonna hit. Whatever it, I mean, if you have to say it out loud, say it out loud. I've done it before. I close my eyes and I'm like, I want to hit this baby draw onto the green for birdie. And sometimes it works. The more I do it, the better, the more it works. It's kind of crazy. The next R is react. This is the actual movement of your body. What they recommend is having one swing thought, not three, not two, one swing thought, steady back slow back, smooth back, whatever it is. That's what you need to have, one swing thought, because if you have more than one, your mind can only focus on one thing. Focus on one thing. Leads us to the fourth R, which is relax. This comes after hitting the shot. You can't do anything about it, so you might as well get your mind off golf because you have three hours to talk to your buddies, talk to your playing partners, get to know them, whatever it is. Whatever you do, just don't think anything about golf because that just wears you down. It hurts your golf game. It's hard to do because you're always thinking, man, I'm freaking five over. Man, I'm three over. Man, I'm six under. Man, I'm four under. Whatever it is. Don't think about it because that's when you start to do things that are not in your routine. You start to push more. You start to lay up more. If you do all those things, comes results. But it literally comes down to in the brain, in the dome. And it's crazy just how mental. This is one of the most mental sports ever. Sometimes I'm in a good mental state. And then there's other times to where I am not. So I like to go back and look at times to where I was in a very good mental state. But you know what? Let's just look at them right now. I'm gonna dissect myself, see if we can learn a few things because I'm about to have a Monday qualifier. So if you guys don't know who I am, I am Luke Peavy. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment for the boys. I wanna give back to the boys because I mean, I don't have $500 to spend on a mental game coach, you kidding me? So let's go back to when in the summertime I was playing super good. So let's look at this right here. 
This was the best round I had at the Georgia Open. Shot two under. This whole week I was dialed in with my mental game. Let's see the difference between my routine here and then the last tournament I'd actually played. All right, so I teed up here. I'm looking back behind it, putting my glove on. I'm visualizing it right now. So I go half swing, half swing, that's two. All right, this is when I actually really started visualizing. I'm closing my eyes right here, and then it's go time. I visualize the shot in my mind saying, here we go. Waste no time, butter cut. So my swing has changed a little bit, but the routine here was absolutely insane. Let's look back at it just a second. Lately, I've been moving the club back and forth, maybe a little bit too much. Let's see, let's see how many times I do it here. Back, forth, back, forth, twice. Now let's go look at the last tournament. Watch this right here. I'm not closing my eyes. I am just going through the motions right here. I look up, I do the same kind of routine. One, two, three, four. I mean, a little bit too much movement going on there. So I need to kind of, the routine's off here. It's not the same that I was when I was playing my best. So I need to look at that and go back to when I was playing my best and do that solid routine because it's all mental. Because that's the only thing you can actually control in your whole golf game. That's the only thing you can control. Number three, one of the things I've learned is the only limitations to your golf game are those that you acknowledge. The only limitations that you guys acknowledge, that's the only thing. I mean, if you don't think you can shoot at a par, your mind will limit you to that. You mentally have to believe it over and over again. Even if you have to reassure yourself, say, I can shoot under par. I can shoot under par. I can shoot under par. Freaking do it. Say it. You know, the goal for this round is to have an under par round, so. And actually believe it. Because the things that are on your mind is what you will do to improve everything in your life. Whether that be golf or not. The mind is limitless. The only limit to your golf game are those that you acknowledge. If you don't believe that you can birdie every hole, then you're not gonna birdie every hole. I truly believe when I go on a golf course, I can birdie every hole that is out there. And you should believe that you can birdie every hole too. It takes one good shot, two good shots, three good shots. If I think I deserve to get into the Monday qualifier, I mean like, somebody's gotta get in, so why not me? Why not you? I mean, anybody can do it. Bobby Jones said it. The most important thing is six inches. It's right here, boys. The greatest six inches on the golf course is right here. I mean, the mind is so powerful in golf, but this is the greatest asset you have on your golf course. You can master a 10,000 hour rule. Say you do something for 10,000 hours. You become good at what you do. Just because you put 10,000 hours doesn't mean you're gonna be great. It means you'll be good. That's where the greatness starts, right there in the dome. That's what separates you from being a good player from a great player. Focus on that routine. Be confident in yourself. Your mind is your biggest asset on the course. So I hope this helped you guys just a little bit, a little free insight because I never had the money to pay for something like that. So I want to thank you guys for always watching. Hopefully you guys can improve those scores. I'm looking to improve my own scores because I'm always trying to get a little bit better every day, trying to get better and better and better and better. I'll see you guys next week. Lego. Not meditation. The way of the sandbagger. I'm a sandbagger. I'm a sunbagger. I want to be a sunbagger. Sunbagger makes PGA Tour. Sunbags Phil Mickelson for a few million. Sunbagger. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Let go. Let go.